so yeah i just started the recording and this is our section uh, or session number six and for the dc machines or continuing the dc module number five the dc machines hopefully we will finish it today uh, next time or like today after the dc machines we have the uh, midterm by like 7 30 today I'm going to upload it on the uh, website. After you finish, you you have you can scan your your uh, uh, answers and send it to my email. Okay. If there is no question, let me jump to the DC machines which we started last time, and hopefully we will finish it today. Maybe because as we do with every module, I'm going to solve one of the, uh, you know, like the final exam or like the previous exams uh, of the problems. But maybe like it's it will be like next uh, week, not this one, because we have the midterm and I will have to stick with the time. Okay. So DC machines, after we finish this one, we will have our midterm today. And from next time, we are going to start the synchronous machines. Okay. So after the synchronous machines, of course, we will have the induction ma machines. And that's it for the PEO exam. So we have two more machines after the DC. And that's it, like for the exam. We have extra uh, module regarding the transmission lines. And we will do like another uh, session for the course review and we will have the final exam, okay? So we already went through the DC machines and their applications. Uh, we said that we still have some kind of like applications uh, for the DC motors, but it's not, uh, you know, as uh, maybe popular uh, as the AC machines, but it's still we have some, you know, like, uh, you know, like some applications. One thing is that the starter for, for the car, for example, it's still like we are using a, a small, uh, relatively small DC motor to start your car, okay, using your battery as a DC source. So we discussed this one from the commutator and moving from the AC here to the DC, and we included actually um, of course, using the commutator, uh, using more uh, coils or windings, and then you can have better or higher quality of the DC. Okay, so smaller ripples. You can see at with what with uh, one winding, it was reaching to zero. Now you have uh, two, so it's like better. Four, you will have better and better, and so on. Okay, so after that, we discussed the power flow. Um, the, the first thing is like the armature action, the armature action in general, they are doing uh, weakening the flux, reducing the flux in the machines. We said for the generators, the impact is reducing the voltage. Motors, it's like more even dangerous because at the end, it's, it will increase the speed until you reach to the uh, runaway condition. So maybe like breaking your uh, shaft or your, um, you know, like your, your X for the uh, motor. The components we, we have, or the equivalent circuit, let's say for the DC machines, we have something called the armature. Uh, so the armature and the field or the excitation, the armature is the one that we uh, provide the, uh, you know, the source or like the uh, electric source, or we are getting the electrical energy. So this is the, the terminals actually of your DC machine. Okay, motor or generator. The field is the excitation. Both we have some uh, copper losses. Okay, I square R. Uh, we have, the brushes, of course, that we use in the commutator, there is a voltage drop. And because of this voltage drop, we have a power. Uh, most likely, we ignore this in the 
uh, you know, like the approximate, let's say, equivalent circuit of the DC machines. We have core losses similar to the transformer. Uh, um, new than the transformer is we have mechanical losses because this one is moving and we have something called the stray load losses this is to make you know balance between the input and the output okay power flow this is for the motor and then we will have it for the generator the power from the electric source to the mechanical okay to the output here you have because it's electric source the first losses is the i square r the copper losses then we have the power flow in the air gap jumping to the air from the uh, uh, stator let's say to the rotor we call this power is the converted power okay and you can you can say like p equal to the e times i equals to the torque times omega and let me maybe draw the yes let me draw the equivalent circuit so you can you can understand what is the e and i so we have this is the dc machine let's say the motor so because it's a motor you will put a source here vt terminal and the current is going this way because it's a motor from the source IA, let's say I armature. And this is RA, the armature resistance. And this, this is the EMF or the back EMF of the DC motor. So if you multiply the power here, the current times this voltage, we call this, this power is the converted power. Okay, convert it to the your shaft. And it's equal to the torque induced times the omega. So torque times the omega equals to the E times the IA. After that, we have something like it's the core losses, hysteresis, and eddy current. Mechanical losses here, because you know we, we discussed this uh, last time. We have the bearings and this one is rotating. So we have some kind of like friction and we have something uh, uh, like a resistance from the air. We call it the windage. So we have something called mechanical losses. History losses to balance between this and this. And uh, at the end, you will have this torque. Okay. So this is output. Out. Okay. Torque times omega. This is the like the torque, the applied torque, right? Or like the torque at the or output torque. It's different than this torque, the induced. The induced is the one on the shaft without the losses. But this one, it's a lower. This is the torque for the, uh, you know, at the output. Okay. Similar to the motor we can do the exact same thing but in the opposite is the uh, uh, for the generator for the dc generator but starting from the the input to the output okay to the terminal and we have the induced torque at and the converted here so it's exactly the same we just you know it's we we look at the uh, this power in the reverse so it's like mechanical to electrical. So it's a generator, right? Uh, equivalent circuit. This is what we discussed. Uh, I can jump to the next because it's more uh, simplified. So we have the armature resistance, RA. This is the armature ter terminals. Usually we put like the source here if it's a motor, VT, VT terminal voltage. We have E. The field, it's uh, the RF here, F1, F2. We will have, you know, different equivalent circuit. This one, you can see like that, that you see now is that we call it like separately excited if you put like a source uh, here. So you put like a, another source here for the excitation or for the field. 
okay? We discussed the magnetization curve. We are not going to use it as a pH curve. We said we can use it like as E and IF. Sometimes we put like E with the MMF. MMF is the N times the current, right? The MMF is the N, number of turns, times the current. For the machines, it's like the field current, okay? We said, because E, if you remember, it's K phi omega, it's basically, it depends on the speed, and this curve is at a certain speed, at one speed. And E equals to K phi omega. The K is a constant, phi is the flux. Sometimes we can use the phi, the flux, or the IF. Because it's, there is a relationship between the field and the IF, right? The flux and the IF. Omega, or the number of turns, um, sorry, like the uh, N, the RPM. So speed can, can be like omega, radian per second, or N. Then... Of course, this is the hysteresis loop. We discussed this with the permanent magnet. We discussed something about if you are loading your DC motor and you put like extra load. So at the end, you will like eventually reach to uh, lower uh, 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 speed and higher torque. So lower speed and higher torque, we discussed the torque speed characteristic. This is for the separately excited or the shunt that we are going to do. To sh I'm going to show uh, in the next slides. So when you put like more loads to your motor, your speed is going to decrease. Okay, and it it makes sense, right? It it makes sense. Like you put more mechanical loads to your motor, your speed is going to be reduced. Okay, separately excited. Excitation, you have another field current and uh, field voltage separate than what you have in the armchair. Okay. Shunt, it means you put your field in parallel. Shunt is parallel to your armchair. Okay, you have one source. This is better. This is actually... Maybe over 90% of the exams, it's like shunt DC motor. PO exam, 90% shunt DC motors. So this is like most likely is the one that you will see in the exam. However, we have to cover everything. For example, the series uh, DC motor, they put the, the field in series. We call it RS here and instead of like the F for the field. And um, the series DC motor, they have an interesting torque uh, speed characteristic. And we discussed the reason because now you have the uh, field current is the armature current. So they are both equal. So we will have, you know, interesting, very high uh, starting torque at speed equals to zero. Stand still when your motor is at the standstill, not running. The starting torque is very, very large. So we use this, um, like it's a very common in the tractions. We discussed what if we have both, like series and uh, shunt, series and shunt to, all together. So this is the equivalent circuit. For this one, which is the default, it, we call it like the long. We put the series first and then the shunt, or you can put the shunt first and the series, we call this one is the short, long or short. Um, in case you have like a problem in the exam and they said it's like um, compounded, I mean like they have a series and shunt, by default it's the long one. Okay? The long shunt connection, not the short shunt connection. By default. Okay? We stopped here last time. I, like, Today is we are going to finish the starting of the DC motors, solve maybe like uh, two, three examples, and then start our exam. So any questions before we start the DC 
motor starting or starters. Okay. So for the DC motors, in general, it's uh, we have to have like any kind of motors. We have to have a kind of like a special control and protection. Protection in case you have faults, for example, problems, short circuit. Okay, this will you have to have like a certain kind of protection to protect your equipment from the short circuit. Uh, even like not just the over the the short circuit, the overload. If you have more load than the motor is designed to withstand, this is uh, overload. Okay, during the starting, we will see you can have just during the starting a very high current. You have to protect your motor against this one, and at the end, you have to have something to control mainly the speed for your motor. So it's the first three points are regarding the protection, short circuit, overload, and the starting current. The last one is about the control, and you need to control the speed of your motor. So let's discuss why there is a problem during the starting of your DC motor, okay? So for the DC motor, let me draw the equivalent circuit. We will use the equivalent circuit. It's, you know, there is no derivation for this, like the DC, the, like the transformer. So we have the DC motor. So we have a terminal and we have RA, E, A, and this is the current I uh, terminal or I line, and this is I A. They are the same here. Let's say like this is um, separately excited or shunt, it doesn't matter. And this one, we have the current I, A, or I line. For this case, they are both equal. The current here is this voltage minus this over the resistance. So it's like V terminal minus E A over R A. Okay. If you remember the E equals to K phi and omega constant flux and the speed. During the starting of your machine from the standstill, this speed is zero. So E equals to zero. This one will be zero. Because the current was like the difference between the voltage over RA. Now it's like VT during the starting. Only during the starting. It's a VT over the RA. This number is extremely large. You can, we put like one example here to show you like how, how large it is. So it's like, if you have this motor with output power of like 50 horsepower, uh, 250. RA equals to 0.06, okay? And your full load or rated current is 200 amps. Then put like the 250 over the R, E is zero. So during the starting, the current can reach to over 4,000. Compared to the rated 200 amps, this is extremely large. In general, any equipment, any equipment, motor, generator, any any electric equipment, they can withstand more than the rated for a certain time. For example, this one is 200 amps. They can withstand to like 300 amps for one minute, for example. They can withstand 1,000 amps, but for one second. They can withstand, so it's it's like a function on the time. The 200 amps, the rated current is the current that they can withstand forever, right? It's like the current that is, the machine is designed to withstand under indefinite um, time. But once you put like more than the rated, 
then it's a function on the time. But it's still like 4,000, it's extremely large. Sometimes during the starting, we allow the current to go to 1.5 of the rated or two times of the rated, but not, you know, like maybe like how many times, like 20 times or more than 20 times. This is very, very large. Okay. But definitely we accept the current to go beyond the, uh, during the starting for a short period of time to go beyond the rated, but for a, again, short period of time. Okay. Uh, and don't worry about like uh, how, how like, uh, you know, how much you can get from the current during the starting, because we, we can get like a starting uh, problems, even the previous exams, they tell you it's like 1.5 or two times of the rated current. So you will design your resistance to um, limit your restarting current to this amount. And yes, it it in the previous exams, it it uh, you know it happened uh, like uh, or like we had like a couple of problems regarding the starting. So the starting method that we have in the, the PO uh, exam and our textbook that Chapman. So this one is about the resistive kind of, of uh, starting. It's not the efficient way. This is a very old um, one uh, due to the high losses of this. So we insert one resistor actually in the armchair uh, until the EA can build up. So because when it's the, your motor is going to start, uh, or a speed is increasing, omega is increasing, you will have E, and then at the end, you will uh, have, um, sh you know, like, or you will limit your current. Uh, the resistor is not like permanently there, it's just uh, we put it during the starting, otherwise you will have a lot of losses, okay? And you remove after the motor, uh, started already to move and you have the EA. This is how it looks. Um, this is the, the, with the armature resistance, you include one more resistance. You start from the largest value and with the time you can jump to the lower resistance until you completely take it off. So what what the, the this resistance is going to do? It's going to 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 limit your starting current. So remember the I in the starting equals to uh, VT EA was zero over the RA. I'm going to add another resistance here, external resistance here. Okay. You limit what is the value of this based on how much like you can go to for the starting current. For example, in the previous exams, they said like 1.5 of the rated. Remember the 200, the rated, you can go 1.5 of the rated. You have V term, VT, the terminal, 250 volt, and RA is like 0.06 uh, ohm then you can calculate the external resistance that is going to limit your starting current to 1.5 of the rated, okay? They call it sometimes like the um, streetcar resistance because the streetcars started with this, um, in, in Toronto, they started with this actually concept. They had it when uh, like in, very all the time, so they use this resistor uh, starting. So this one is like uh, was used. This method was used in you know all the times. One efficient way is instead of adding the V terminal in all in in one shot like the 250 now we can have a source that is during the starting increasing from 0 to 250 volt in, gradually 
Okay, so instead of using the resistive uh, or resistor starting, this one is more efficient actually. To to be honest, like more efficient. Any question before we start our examples? It's like a couple of examples, I believe. And they are simple, not complicated. And next time we are going to solve one of the DC machine um, final, ex like previous exams yeah. of the PO previous exams, just because, you know, we do our, you know, like the, as we used to, to, to do at the end of each module, we solve one of the previous exams, just, just one. Uh, definitely we will have time at the end of the course to solve more. We solve more during the assignments and you will see today with the midterm, but I like to, you know, like, uh, and you have to do your, your uh, job at home. So you have to try to solve and in case you have anything, just, you know, take some photos and, uh, or scan your paper and email it to me. Any question before we start the first, I believe this is the first example. Okay, no question. Let's solve this one. This is um, serious as, as we can, you can see in the exam, they are going to uh, say something about the, 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 or give you some notes about the type of the DC machine. This one is 250 series and DC motor. So you can immediately try to draw the, you have the RA and because this one is a series, so you will have another R, we call it S, the series. You have the V terminal, you have the E here, E, e A, this is a motor, so the current will be this way. This is the current armature, or it's exactly the same as the field S. Oh, yes. We have the resistance of both RA and RS because they are in series. So this is RA plus RS are give, like is given. The field, the series field, uh, is consists of 20 so that this is the n of the s is 25 turns per pool of course they provided the magnetization curve that's good and the equivalent circuit we can see it now in the next slide okay they ask it about to find the speed speed when they they ask for speed you can get both a number of turn, sorry, like uh, RPM, N, uh, no, uh, RPM, the speed in RPM, and omega, the radian per second. So RPM is like how many like revolution per minute? This is radian per second. You can get, for example, the N, and after that, you can multiply by 2 pi over 60 to convert it to like from the revolution to radiant. And instead of a minute, it will be second. So if you multiply by this, it will go to omega. So you get, for example, the N and then you move it to omega or you can get omega and move it to N. But in the exam, when they ask just the speed and they didn't say N or omega, you can get both. Then they ask it about the torque. Torque, okay. Torque, of course, the induced torque. The torque here, remember the induced, it's the here of the motor when the armchair current is given here. So the armchair current is given, by the way, it's not just the armchair current, it's the field current because we have it in series. They are both equal. So both equal to 50 amps. So, and you have the VT. You can calculate the E, right? EA from this, it's like V, 
T minus the I A times the resistance. Okay. When you have the EA, EA times IA, this is the power, right? The power here over omega, then the power over omega, this is the torque induced. This is the power converted. Okay. So you can you can get the E by having the terminal voltage, you have your current, you have your resistance, and then because you have the E and the IA, you can calculate the omega, right? Or you can have the omega. How can we get the omega? After we have the E, we have the magnetization curve at a certain speed, okay? Let me, let me clear this and go just to show you like the, how it looks like. This is the magnetization curve. It's for a certain speed, E, and here they put like the MMF, right? The field magnetomotive force, the MMF. This is the equivalent circuit. They have the RA and RS. And the I line or I armature, they are equal to the I field. We have the number of the turns for the N for the pool. Okay. Given the number of the turns for the pool, and the this is the number of the turns of the pool, and we have the field current. We can multiply each to get the MMF. Once you have the MMF, for this speed, you can get the E. So for this speed, you will have the E. E1 equals K P1 and omega 1 or N1, because I am going to, to take the ratio E2 over k v2 omega 2. Now you have the speed in n. So because this one is ratio, it doesn't matter if it's omega or the n. So I can say n1 and n2. It's a speed. It's but the difference between omega and n is just a constant. k is a constant for the same machine. So you can ignore. So. You, you are going to multiply n times the current of the field to get the MMF. Let's say it's here. With this MMF, you can calculate the E for this speed. This E for this speed. For the same field, if you have, we already calculated the E, remember it's the V terminal minus I times the resistance. We can calculate the speed for our case. We are going to assume it's the same field, the same MMS. Okay. We can calculate the speed here from this. And from this speed, N, we have to move this one to omega by multiplying it 2 pi over 60. Make it omega because if you remember, the torque is the power over omega. It's not the N. For this equation, it's not a ratio. You have to use omega in radian per second. P equals to E times I and omega and radian per second. You already calculated the E, I is given, the 50 amps, you have the omega. That, that's it for this problem. I can show you the calculations here. The first thing we calculated the E, okay? And we have the current. 
field current is the armature because this is a series, uh, a series connection for the DC. Now you calculated the MMF. From the magnetization, we have the MMF. Okay, we can calculate the E. E is a at E node here. It's like 80 volt. This is at a speed equals to, I believe it, it's 1200, yeah, 1200 RPM. So there is a, a typo here for in the uh, solved problem. So there is another zero here. Anyway, so you have the E and you have the speed. You can get your speed is this. Then you can calculate the torque. It's the E I over omega, but you have to multiply by two pi over 60 to get it in Newton meter. This is your torque. Okay. This is the, um, maybe like part A here for this problem, for the series DC motor. Part B is to calculate and plot the torque speed characteristic for this motor. This motor is a series and we said it's not um, a linear. If you remember the curve. So how can we calculate the curve for the, uh, DC motor, we have to get different points. So we we have we want to calculate or like sorry like draw the torque speed characteristic. If you remember, it was something like this. You have to get different speed or different points here. We already have like one torque for one speed. How can we get different points by changing this current? So you will solve, for example, the part A multiple times, let's say at, at, the, at 25 amps and at 10 amps and, and so on, and repeat the same problem. You will get different points for the torque and speed, and you put like the points here and you can draw it. In the exam, to, to be honest, we I haven't seen uh, any kind of like asking for um, plotting using points like this. Uh, one time they asked about the induction motor or induction machine uh, torque speed characteristic, but just to draw, um, you know, um, just a sketch, not like the points. But this is a solved problem in the exam in the in the textbook. So they they used even um, MATLAB to do this. So you can buy the MATLAB code, you can actually write a code uh, and you click run to the code to get different points with the speed and the torque. The speed can be omega or N and torque in Newton meter, sorry. Okay. Any question for the first? Example before we go to the second one. I believe we have only three examples. So this is the second one. Okay, no question. Let, let's go to the, you know, the second one. Okay. So for the second one is regarding, as I said, this is the most important, uh, the most common, let's say, uh, problem in the previous exams, the DC shunt motor. They provided the, the power. This is the output power, by the way, the rated output power, output power and rated. And this is the voltage. Uh, because it's a shunt, we can draw it here, right? We can draw the DC shunt, first the RA, and then the RF. Okay, because it's a DC shunt, I'm going to draw the DC shunt V terminal, which is the 250 volt plus and minus, and this is the current IA. This is the current I line from the source, and this is the current for the field IF, and this is RF, this is RA, and this is the E. Okay. They have, they said, okay, the, it's, this is the, the, 
speed, the rated speed, the voltage for the source of V terminal. This is the speed rated. They said you have uh, armature resistance and everything is given. So RA is 0.06 ohm. Field resistance is 50, RF is 50 ohm. Okay. Um, they, they they provided the number of the turns just in case they have the MMF instead of the uh, feed the current. So they put like the N for the field, 1200 turns for the shunt field winding. They asked about the speed, okay? Find the speed at different input current or line current. Input current, it means this current. Okay, different currents. And they are asking about the omega, the speed, or N, omega or N, RPM or radian per second. So for this one, we have the V terminal. We have this current. They are changing from 100, 200 to 300 amps. We are going to solve each one uh, separate and separate. We have the field current, by the way. The field of current, or we can calculate it because we have, uh, this is 250 and this is 50 amps, right? So it's like uh, uh, the field of current is five amps in under all the conditions, under all different currents here. And we can calculate the IA. IA equals to the I line or input current minus the, uh, the five amps for the field. So you can at each one you can calculate the IA. It will be it will be different, right? It will be different. After calculating the, the IA and you have this resistance, you can calculate the E at each point. So E equals to the V terminal minus I A times the resistance R A. So you can calculate the E. They provided to to this one. So I can I can show you like so now we have the E for each point, like for each like A, B, and C. And we have the IA for for the each of points. The input current is changing. The field current is equal to the 5 amps, okay? And we calculated the E. So next, we have, this is the, uh, you know, like the equivalent circuit that we already did. The next, sorry, I okay, can. So next is we have the E at each one, okay? And we have IA for each one. Now we have one input about that at no load, the speed is this, the rated speed. So for your, for your, uh, your machine, your DC machine, no load, it means the current here, the current equals to zero. I'm going to say like the armature current, of course, at no load, the current will go to the field, but no current will be here. This one is moving, but I'm going to ignore all the losses. So the current here is zero. And the E, A equals to, the V terminal. There is no armature current. So at E A equals to um, 250 volt, this one, the V terminal, you have this speed, the omega or N. Let's say this is N node and this is E A node. 
and this is EA1, EA2, EA3. We can use the ratio between EA note and one and two and three, because you have K, the flux and the speed, N or omega, because now it's a ratio, so it doesn't matter. The, the flux is always the same because you have the same field current here, the five amps. So it's always the same. The K is a constant. So it only depends on the N. Here will be N naught. This will be N1. And you can calculate the N1. And then you substitute with e, e, E2 and then get N2 and 3 and get 3. With H1, because the, the force is to calculate the torque speed characteristic, I know the torque speed characteristic from the, um, you know, the curve that we, we saw before. At no, at no load, torque equals to zero. The speed is the no load speed. With the loading, the torque will, read, will, uh, will be uh, higher torque and the speed is lower. How can we calculate the torque? Remember the torque induced the torque is from here. It's the current IA times the E. We already calculated the E and the I. You multiply, you get the power. You divide it by omega, you get the torque. Make sure you get this one in omega. You cannot use that the RPM here. The torque equals the power over omega. This one must be in radian per second. Okay. Any question so far? Okay. They can show you like the, um, so this is the, our uh, equivalent circuit. This is the solution starting with uh, A, B, and C. So current 100 amps, the field current is always like the five amps. So it's, this one will be the armature current 95. And then we go with the E and they calculate the using the ratio. The second one, five amps for, for the field. This is the current for the armature, 195. And the same, the third, the last one is to use this equation to get the induced uh, torque. And you can see the starting is 1200 RPM and it's going to reduce as the torque is increasing or the load is increasing actually. Okay. Any question? So far, okay. So the last, our last um, solve it problem before we go through the uh, break and then the the midterm. So for this one, this is the um, compounded. If you remember the compounded, we have by default it's the the you know, the long one. So you put the series first and then, so let's, let's draw the, we have the RA and the RS, and this is the RF. Okay. And this is the V terminal and this is the E. A, this is the current armchair current or the series. This is the input or the line current, and this is the field current, IF. So for this one, you have the 250 here, 250 volt. Uh, it's This is the output power. Sometimes we don't use it similar to the other, uh, or like the previous example, the output rated power. Uh, compounded, so they have both like shunt and series with the compensation windings, okay, and uh, internal resistance. 
including the series winding. So this one is 0 0.04 ohm. Number of turns for the shunt one, the number of turns here, the N for the F is 1000 turns. Three turns for the uh, series. Yes, the series usually the NS is only three. At no load, the field resistor has been adjusted to run the soda motor at no load speed. This is the no load speed. No load, it means when there is no current here. This is the no load. Okay. And they neglected all kind of losses. That's that's the yeah. We have to put this assumption. So as long as there is no losses at all, so at no load, this current, no current will be in the armature. We ignored all kind of losses. As long as you you don't have load, then you don't have current. You have the magnetization curve, and you have the equivalent circuit in the next slide. They ask it for something like a couple of questions. The first one is what is the shunt field current in this machine at no load? So the first one is a straightforward actually. They said, okay, what is this current? By the way, they didn't give RF because if we have RF, then VT over RF, I can get the field current. But they provided something, magnetization curve. Okay, so how can from the magnetization curve we get the, so magnetization curve is, I will show it in the next slide, but it's like E at a certain, and the, the field the current here or the MMF sometimes. MMF is the number of turns times the field the current, right? So it's like at a certain omega, E with the current or the MMF, at a certain omega. At the no load, the current here is zero, right? So we said E will be equals to the V terminal, 250. So we can use the 250 and we can get the field current. If it's the field current is given, then we will get the current immediately. If it's the MMF, then we are going to divide by the number of turns. Okay. So this is the first part, which I believe it's a straightforward. I can show you like that. So by default, it's a long. And we have the, this is the equivalent circuit. And so it's 250. You go this way, you get the, the field, the current is five amps. And look at just point A. So at point A at no load, the armature current is zero. This is because we assume that there is no uh, losses at all. If the, there is a small losses, the current shouldn't be zero, exactly zero. It will be like the current to, or the power to help the, or the, or like support the losses. So internal generated voltage will be, V terminal will be equal to the E, 250 from magnetization curve, the field current will equals to five amps okay so at 200 so the the shunt current is 5 amps this is the uh, the field current will be 5 amps okay let's solve the part b part b uh, is is interesting because you have two uh, points or two different, uh, you know, like uh, options. They provided the IA. Remember the equivalent circuit? By, by the way, for for the compounded, it's um, the compounded, the main one is the, um, the main field in the machine is the shunt. And then the series is something, you know, secondary. It's not, it's not something main. The, the main one is this. Okay. 
So if, if you remember the cumulative, it means you add the two fields, the one in the field and the shunt. For the differential, you add the, you, you subtracted the shunt, sorry, you, you subtracted the series from the shunt. So the shunt is the main field. The series one is like a secondary. Okay. So from this, you have the V terminal, you have uh, now the current uh, armature. This is the, uh, the given armature. You know the field now, the IF, you know it. You know the number of the turns for the field and the number of the turns for the, shun, uh, for the series, sorry. They asked about, okay, to find the speed. To find the speed, we, as you saw in the previous, so we usually we use the K equals K phi omega, and we are going to do that like this. Okay, like a ratio. So first thing is, if the current is 200 amps, can I calculate the E? Yes, E with this current is not any, like it's not zero anymore. E will be the V terminal minus the I times the resistance. Given the resistance, right? It's here. And the, the current for the armature is this given here, and V is 250. So I'm going to get the E. I can get the E at no load. So E, let's, let's assume if this, this E, you have the E at speed at no load, you can, and this is the speed at no load, you have the E. Okay. So for this one, if it's cumulative, what will be the total field current? The field current now is not just this field current. You have one here. Sometimes it's a cumulative. They are added. Sometimes it's a subtracted, right? In general, the MMF, or the machine in general, it's the MMF of the one in the field plus or minus the MMF of the one in the series and the minus the MMF of the armature reaction. If you have the armature reaction, as we said before, it's always reducing the, the field. However, the series can be cumulative, okay, or differential. This one, sometimes we call it the field and we put like sign here as the equivalent or not the equivalent, like the effective field. And we put like, this is like the N of the field and the I of the field effective. This is the N of the field times the I of the field plus minus, this is the N for the series I of the series. And this is, if you have armature action, you can add it here. We don't have any armature action. I don't want to add more things. So I can calculate the IF effective, like field effective. We use the NF here because it's the main one, the primary. If you divide it here, it will be one and then NS over the NF. Field current, we already calculated from the first point, A. This is the field current. The number of turns for the series and the shunt is given here. Number of the turns for the shunt and the series. Uh, where is, oh yeah. The, the, the current for the uh, series is given. It's the current for the armature. It's the same current, right? The same current here, armature or the series. So you can calculate the IF, I field effective. So by IF effective, you can go here and get the E. 
this is your E. So this is the, the, the field current, IF effective, and this is the E at a certain speed, omega. E at a certain speed. So if you have the same flux and you have your E calculated, what is your speed using the same concept of the ratio? One time you will use this as plus and another time you will use it as minus. Plus or minus. Plus for the cumulatively you add minus when you have differential. Okay? You will have something interesting is regarding the loading. After you, you make, um, you made more load, what would be the speed? For the cumulative, it's, it means you're, you, you'll find the, that the machine is going to reduce the speed with the loading. However, with the differential, it makes something um, different. It's going to increase its speed as long as you load your machine. Okay, let me show you the steps for to solve this problem. We, I already explained the one for the A. Let's start from here. You have, this is the field current, we already have it. You will calculate the E with the 200 amps. This is for both of the, you know, like the, uh, cumulative or differential, it will be uh, exa the same E. However, you will get the effective field current. It's the MMF of the field, effective MMF of the field, MMF of the shunt, uh, sorry, the series, minus the MMF for the armature action. We don't have any armature action here. So you will find that the field, the effective field current is 5.5.6, sorry. Using the magnetization curve, you will get the E at certain speed, the given speed, the 1200 RPM. Use your calculated one with this and this speed and use the ratio to get the new speed. You will find what happened to the speed, to the speed when you use the cumulative, it's decreasing with the loading. This is the new load and this is after the loading. The next one, is you put negative sign here, differential. What will happen to the speed? You will find it's increasing. So the speed with the cumulative Lee compounded uh, uh, motor decreases with the load, differential com compounded motor increases with the load. And that's it. But I, I want to share with you something before we go i believe i have it open here let's let's see if it's if you can i think uh, okay i think i put it here so you can see uh the differential i'm not sure if you can see my screen or can you see the curve that i have here Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So you can see the differential, differentially compounded. It's that what happened with the uh, torque. As you increase the torque, the speed is increasing. This is the only kind of motor that is uh, doing this. However, with uh, commutatively compounded, it's decreasing. Can you see the one for the series and one for the shunt? So they have all the torque speed characteristics. By this, I finished everything uh, we can, before, before we go to the break, we can, I can give you a very little note. I'm not sure if we can uh, use this whiteboard. Yeah. So that you will, we will start now the midterm, the midterm two, two problems, the magnetic circuit. So for the, and the power and three phase. So one note, 
just a note in case you have the BH curve. Okay, the BH curve. In case you have, this is your curve, for example, in case you have the B is above the curve and there is no intersection until, for example, the infinity, it means the H is going to be infinity. I mean, let's say like you have the B here, okay? You will get the H at this point. You have this H, you will get the B on this point. However, if you are asking for a flux, a certain flux, so sometimes it's impossible to get this kind of flux because your machine will be, or your core will be saturated at certain point. So you will never get this one. It means you need like H to be almost infinity. This is just one note. Yeah. And in case you have any prop, like any question actually, before we start the exam, because we will have like 10 minutes or 12 minutes or, or so of a break. And then we can, I, I'm going to upload the exam on our um, site. Make sure that all of you can see, and then I'm going to close the uh, session, give you like uh, one hour and 30 minutes almost from the starting to your, um, you know, uploading your exam. Any question? Any no questions? Let's um, take a short break and then we can come for the uh, midterm exam. Thank you.